Amanda, let me set the scene. It's January, the height of summer in Sydney. You've been gifted a mid-century house all to yourself in Duffy's Forest to paint for this show. Mm. You're looking out over a gully. You're working with all the windows open and your new friends, the dragonflies, are just going about their business. Uh, why do the dragonflies remind you of painters? So I was drawing the conclusion that they're not born with wings. They come later on. Mm. So I was thinking, you know, a bit like a painter, that their wings develop later and then fly. So I've seen that happen with a lot of older artists that, you know, just get better and better as they get older. And I think it's something that, you know, I've been trying to aim for. Have you got your wings? Um, no, I'm sure. I'm sure I've got like one broken wing and one, one still popping out. It's been really good for me to be somewhere new and I love being somewhere new and yeah I've been doing a bit of reading about the area and things that happened in Port Kembla before all the steelworks were here you know a bit of the history are uh, things like they sold all the sand on the beach in Port Kembla to Hawaii so all that beautiful white sand that people go to Hawaii for actually came from down here so I thought that was, uh, you know, I called one of the paintings Selling Sand. And because, um, you know, Port Kembla hasn't got the best reputation, I don't think, for a swimming beach. But it doesn't help if they shifted all the sand off to another country. <laughs> This trip I'm going to just look at the sea pools which the council put in you know they're old um, male and female baths segregated bathing back then um, so I find that sort of early Australian history very interesting it was apparently a British thing where they uh, enforced that sort of modesty where men and women should bathe separately so a lot of the beaches down here have got a double pool and now I realise why. The hills are shadows, 
and they flow from form to form, and nothing stands. They melt like mist, the solid lands, like clouds they shape themselves and go. Hi Amanda, how are you going? Yeah, good. Hills that flow and solid lands melt. Why do you like that poem? It's quite a romantic poem, although it has a, a tragic um, tone to it. Hills do move and, you know, they'll be there one minute and then they might disappear with poor light or low fog or, you know, low cloud or fog. So, you know, the, the environment is always moving. Your, your view is always changing or moving. Mm. Tidal things, you know, there'll be sandbank there one minute and then when you go back the next day to finish the painting, the bloody thing's not there because you haven't gone over so much time of the day. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, and that's in that poem. And it's just, you know, about things forever changing. To actually just stand and face a blank canvas, it is, uh, it can be a bit overwhelming. Angry penguins, they were a Melbourne group. One of them said starting a painting is like slowly immersing yourself into a pool and you just, you know, slowly get in, slowly get in. And then once you're underwater, the rest of the world disappears. You can't hear anything, you can't see other people or maybe little shapes or something. I think starting a new painting is more like running across a freeway with a blindfold on. It can be a bit traumatic. <laughs> but you keep going, you keep doing it. Today I saw the dragonfly come from the worlds where he did lie. An inner impulse rent the veil of his old husk. From head to tail came out clear plates of sapphire mail. He dried his wings like gauze they grew. Through crofts and pastures wet with dew a living flash of light he flew.